Hello there and welcome to the Super Eagles Watch Podcast powered by Hotspots, the official media partners of the Super Eagles of Nigeria. The name is Victor Godfrey in the presence of the icon talking about Tony Bitoy and today we shall be talking about everything that has to do with your darling Super Eagles of Nigeria. An appeal for you now as a fan of the Super Eagles, please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's the only way you can show your love and support to us but also to a better, better and bigger picture support for the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Sir, it's good to have you again. Wonderful episode. Thank you for being a part of today's show. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing good. Thank you for the opportunity oh, to be a part of this show. Saying uh, opportunity. Victor. And uh, <laughs> it's always a pleasure to be here, you know, to show support to the Super Eagles of Africa, Super Eagles of Nigeria. Mm. I know that one day the Super Eagles will make the whole of Africa very proud, perhaps mm -hmm. become the first African country uh, to get into the finals of the World Cup mm. and the first African country to maybe lift the World uh, Cup. The World Cup. Uh, Morocco already something. beat us to being the first to get to the semifinals, mm -hmm. uh, but then we need to be the first to get into the finals and, win and it. then the first one to win it. And That'll it starts by qualifying for the, for the World, Cup. World Cup. Yeah, I know that's very much in the forefront of our thought patterns, talking about the Super Eagles and the World Cup qualification coming up in a few short weeks. But Let's talk about the players now who will be hopefully be a part of the Super Eagles and the setup for the World Cup qualifiers. And we had them have a great uh, outing over the weekend in Europe, especially in England. And a player who has seen a resurgence in terms of a new playing style, a new lease of life in terms of his uh, positional play, Wilfred Ndidi, who for many years has been a major anchor in that defensive midfield. But for Leicester City this season, and to great results, he has been playing in a more advanced role. Your thoughts on this? I'm so happy for Wilfred Ndidi. Um, he's playing, as you said, in an advanced role mm. um, from being a number six uh, with high reputation, mm -hmm. now becoming like a number eight. Uh, he was brought in to replace Ngolo Kante, if, if memory serves right. So, yeah, Leicester City. Yeah, back in the yeah, day. Yeah, but then so. he has developed into his own man. Yeah, he has. Uh, and I remember uh, one of the first interviews he granted, he says, I'm not here as Ngolo Kante. I am Wilfred Ndidi. I'm, <laughs> I'm a different player altogether. I'm doing my own job my own way mm. so i'm not comparing myself with anybody but i'm happy to see uh wilfred uh get into advanced position mm -hmm. playing a lot of roles um he has a skill set for it by the way because he's very comfortable on the ball um and he's very hard working and he has a lot of a lot, a lot of stamina um they call him double engine in the super eagles yes. because he's, he's he's everywhere he's everywhere he covers the entire pitch um so i'm happy for him and um, he's getting goals, like he got over the weekend. He's getting assists. Um, so it's, it's, it's good, really, really good for, for uh, Wilfred Ndidi. Would that not translate well to the Super Eagles? Because you already have quite a few options in that midfield. It will be more or less as our most creative player. Uh, do you think it would be good for him to be in that position when we also have it will be? Or should he still stick to his normal defensive uh, midfield duties when it comes to play for the Super Eagles? The good thing about Wilfred is that he's very tactically disciplined. So mm. if you tell him this is the role you're going to be playing, this is what you're going to be doing, he's going to stick to it. And um, another good thing about the Super Eagles is that we have a lot of options now. Mm -hmm. Those who are very good defensively, who can do the job. So uh, if you want to push Indy forward in a game or you want him to switch roles, it's an advantage for us because you can now actually change your plans tactically. You can change your formation without your opponents knowing that mm. you've done it. With players like NDD who can play in two, three positions, Frank Oyenka gets into attacking position. Mm -hmm. He's also getting goals. Mm -hmm. uh, he will be excellent player, creative if you give him the license to you know, do what he loves to do the best. So it's good. You have Oyedeka who is solid defensively and is also getting goals. Mm. Uh, Al Alassan had a good uh, AFCON, remember? Yes, he did. Uh, in the middle of the park as well. So we are beginning to throw, throw up a lot of options for the team in the midfield, mm. which we... Uh, Aribo also. Oh, Joe Aribo as well. Aribo yeah. got a goal. Yeah, the, for Southampton, yeah, even though it was a losing effort. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they lost. So we are beginning to get a lot of these options and um, it, it, it's good for us. Uh, the major work now will be for the coach, uh, who will tell this boy what to do Except when the they coach. are in the green. We don't have we don't have the white. coach yet. So we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. But while we're happy, while we're happy for um, Wilfred, mm -hmm. uh, it's a little worrying um, for, for Kelechi because he's not injured, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't see him get uh, as much playing time as he used to uh, get Leicester. for, for, for as, as a matter of fact, earlier so this it's, season, it's really he actually had, me, yeah. he had a, a, a spell whereby he was actually very prolific and was in fine form. But like you mentioned, one can also say perhaps one of the issues is the fact that a player like Vadi, who has been fantastic, he has rolled back the years, 
might be one of the reasons why Ian Ocho doesn't have that sniff in that attacking lineup for Leicester. Yeah, it's but a possibility. Uh, I don't, I don't. When Kelechi is fit, it brings a different dimension to your team. True. Um, so um, I know there was a little bit of an argument about coming to the Nations Cup, uh, recovering from injury yeah, or staying injured, back yeah. and all of that. I hope that's not what is making the coaches of Leicester keep him up the pitch. I hope not, uh, because Kelechi has a lot to offer that team going forward. Uh, in their quest to return to the to the Premier League, Kelechi is very very prolific. He's very deadly on his day, and I think they need him to help push their their, their, um, their campaign to return to the Premier League. Okay, well let's talk about attackers now. Three of them in three different countries. We had uh, Lukman in Italy for Atalanta. We had Cyril Dessers in Scotland, and of course you had Victor Boniface in Germany. Different fortunes for these three. Goals, assist, and a red card. You want to break that down for Let us? me start with the victor. <laughs> Let me start with the victor. Victor got the red card. Uh, not, 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 not this one. Not this you're one. Not, you're, <laughs> not, you're not claiming that. But, but then, it was pushing. Mm. I mean, for me, it was a show of commitment. Mm. You know, it's just back from injury. He came in as a sub, and then he got uh, the a red, red card before the end of the game. And thankfully, they were able to salvage a point. A draw to maintain the unbeaten and record. And maintain the unbeaten yeah, run in all competitions this yeah. season. It's, it's an amazing... Uh, run of results for, for uh, Leverkusen. Serial Dessas, I like that guy. Mm. Um, I wish he could be more prolific for the Super Eagles. He's a top, top but guy. He, he was on target guy. against Ghana last friendly game. Yeah, last on target on the, from the penalty spot. Mm. But he's a good player. He got two goals for, for Rangers. Uh, and they're in the final now. Uh, of the Scottish of, of, Cup. Of the, of the Scottish and Cup. for the one millionth yeah. time, he's against Celtic. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I know there's no other clubs in Scotland, but, right? that, but, but that's good for him. And then Lukman as well. Yeah. Um, we know what Lukman can do. The Nations Cup opened us up to a different kind of Lukman. Mm. And now we're seeing that he's really um, pulling it together for uh, Atlanta. So it's, it's, it's good, very good that we're getting all of these guys back uh, in good form as we build up to the crucial moments uh, when we will need them to come and replicate all of this good form in the green and white of the Super Eagles. Yeah, so I still have the green and white jersey from the Nations Cup where we came in second place, meaning that I'm really repping the green and white of, of the national team, the colours. But now we spoke about replicating this form for us. The players are ready. We're not looking for players to play for the Super Eagles. They are ready to serve their fatherland or motherland. But the question now is, our manager, the NFF, taking such, we say they're taking their merry time. This is actually worrying signs because we have just a few weeks before we go into the international break and two vital fixtures against two teams that both wear yellow as their home kits but are also looking for gold against us. You know, that's why I always worry anytime Nigerians clamor for um, a coach uh, to be changed, mm. a Spygo's coach to be changed, just for the fun of it. I worry a lot because I know that the you process. can get a coach out, but to get another coach to come in, mm. I know. I know my people. <laughs> we know ourselves. It's going to take a long while. A lot of other factors that you do not think about mm. will creep into it and it becomes a complex issue. That's why when people say, we want to change the coach, we want to change the coach, just for the sake of it. I just, I show that because I, I, I ask myself, do you understand what it means to try to get a person to replace a coach in Nigeria? It's not as easy as it looks. Mm. So, um, but they have said that, um, it, within a few days before the end of the week, we're hearing different things. But we were hearing last we, we, week. Exactly. Now we are hearing this week that it will be sorted. The most important thing, uh, Victor, is that let us hope that after all of these delays, we do the right thing. We get the right person. Incredible stuff. Uh, of, of course, this is a conversation that has been very much in the forefront of football fans across uh, Africa and, of course, across Nigeria, most importantly. But we do have the thoughts of a former international, former Super Eagles, if you want to use that term. Uh, he won gold medal in 1996 with the under-23 team, the dream team, the original dream team, not what the Americans called themselves. Uh, but also, he was a silver medalist at the 2000 Nations Cup in Ghana and Nigeria. That very sad final. Oh, man. But... Uh, talking about the one and only Tijani Babangida, and he says his thoughts on the delay and the reason why he feels that we need to have our Super Eagles coaching situation sorted out before we go into the World Cup qualifiers in June. Uh, TJ, the, the last time we spoke to you, uh, the Super Eagles were at the Africa Cup of Nations getting ready for South Africa. Uh, now we are getting ready for South Africa again, this time in the World Cup qualifiers. 
uh, but we don't have a coach named yet for the team. Is this something that we should worry about? Yes, it's worrisome because um, I know after we defeated South Africa, uh, the semi-final of the African Nation Cup, they said that uh, they are waiting for us uh, in Johannesburg and also the match that we're going to play in Lego. So they are much, much ready, waiting for us. But uh, you find out that uh, we're having issues of uh, uh, coaching. And uh, I think that is something that uh, NFF has to do with uh, very fast so that at least the coach can start organizing and trying to see maybe uh, he make a team before before the time arrives because time is going faster. Mm. Uh, uh, TJ, um, you, you've played football to the highest level. You've worked with so many coaches. Um, how would you want us to approach these two games against South Africa in New York? and against Benin Republic in Abidjan? Well, uh, I can tell you that uh, the match against South Africa will be more stronger, even though football nowadays have changed. Uh, even Benin Republic can be able to, they, they have also the chance to surprise us. Uh, we have to take it uh, more uh, positively because we know what is at stake. Any losing of a game now, in that, uh, we, have to, we, we have the players to play more, more positive. And we are super egos. We are Nigerians. Uh, we know that we have the players that can do the job. We have to just tell them and they know about it and and, and, and go for it. That is it. Mm. Uh, uh, TJ, there's also an argument about foreign or local coach. Um, what would you want to say about this? Well, uh, you can see the style of uh, the NFF. They are always uh, more comfortable with the foreign coaches, which, of course, after one or two years, they always part away with. Uh, maybe it's chance is the time that we can be able to give uh, our Nigerian uh, coach uh, the opportunity because there's a lot of propaganda on the paper. Now this one is a coach. No, that one is a coach. Um, I want to commend the Brian Gusso administration because uh, he has opened it up. At least we are seeing that uh, the technical committee are advising and working together with NFF on how they can be able to choose a coach. If it's uh, maybe, if it's before, we could have had a name of a coach that uh, the, the, the press will only know the name of the coach when they announce it. Uh, but this time around, they open it up. But I think they are, they are wasting time more and wasting of time is not good at this moment because at the end of the day, they will end up making the wrong decision. Uh, they should just, they have the list of the players. They, they are the coaches. They have interviewed the coaches. And I think they should just hit the nail on the head and just announce the coach so that he can start working. Uh, to me, I would like uh, I would like an Af uh, a Nigerian coach to come up. It's a very long time that we didn't have a Nigerian coach with, uh, with a long contract. Not, uh, not uh, to take a game one or two matches, no. To see that uh, you have four or five years contract, let's say three years contract, so that we can see how far he can go and uh, take it on. But uh, it's left for the committee. At least they are there, they are doing their job. I will just wait for them to see what is coming out very really soon. Yeah, if the NFF eventually go for a Nigerian coach, as you would want us to do, how many years contract would you want that coach to be given? And what kind of support structure would you want that the coach is given. Can they can they give him can they give him the possibility? Of course, he's an African, he's a Nigerian. We know that we have issue of money and so on. Can they give him at least not less than 80% of what they can be able to even to give the European coach? Because given the hundred percent, you can see how they are fighting. We cannot pay him, we cannot do this, we cannot do that. If they can give him and give him the whole, I want a coach, if it's a Nigerian coach that will take three years contract. And if you allow him to do and support, you have technical committee that will work with him and support him. Uh, with the three years, with the three years contract, you can be able to balance yourself. Uh, the first, the first year will be G three for him because the tension is high. You can see the World Cup qualifier, which is there. If you do qualify to the World Cup, uh, you have the preparation for the World Cup. You have the Nation Cup qualifier. We have to go to the Nation Cup. So at least it's a big thing, and the coach must be always. Staying in Nigeria. I don't know why, even when we decide to bring a foreign coach, we always allow him to stay outside. Uh, if he can stay in the country and he can be able to make his team more, 
uh, with more friendlies. I believe that uh, they'll be fine. So three years contract will be good for me. Mm. Before I let you go, um, CJ, the technical department of the NFF have also come under some scrutiny. Uh, people do not understand what they are doing. People are asking questions, what would they do? What would you suggest as um, the responsibility or the obligations of a technical department that can help coaches of the national teams to achieve better results? The point is, are they working? Are they giving them the, the, the atmosphere to work? Uh, because when you put a technical committee, you let them do their job and then bring you the list and then you can decide on it. Uh, you find out that for a very long time, technical committee members are not even are not even having their own own meetings. They can stay for almost one year or almost six months without a meeting and games are going on. Uh, that means they are, they are there only for the name. But now I believe that uh, Ibrahim Gusso has tried to let us see that the technical members are, are sitting. So when they are sitting, we can be able to see that they come out with a positive, at least something to show us. This is what they sit and they advise. Because like I told you from the beginning, it's a very long time that we see that they even bring the name of a coaches and then the technical committee should sit and work on it and then come out with this. So at least there's a brighter chance and future ahead of this. I hope that they make the right decision to bring this and then give the technical committee and then they can be able to advise the NFF on what they think. And there's always two options the technical committee can bring. We think this or this the NFF should go on with their executive to find to take one of well, one of the coaches that, that that is there. TJ, thank you so much for speaking to us. You're welcome to you. Thank you. Now this is going to push on your spot. Uh, we didn't discuss this pre-recording, so you're going to be like, "Where is that coming from, Victor?" But I know you might avoid it because you're versus in the journalist in the game, so I'll give you that one. But I'll still ask the question anyway. Yeah. The candidates for the Super Eagles, who would you pick from the Nigerian ex football internationals or even Nigerians available that could lead the Super Eagles to the future? Who would be your ideal pick? <laughs> I knew it! I Let me it. consult my first album and then I'll get back to you. I knew I was not going to answer that question. I knew I was not going to answer that question. But then again, but that just tells you where we are. We need the best hands and our minds to take care of the Super Eagles of Nigeria because the success of this national team, if it shows, if anything shows us from the Nations Cup, is when the Super Eagles does well for some amazing reason. Whole of Nigeria is actually happy. We're, we're happy people during the Nations Cup. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. All right, that's, that's why we always want the team to win. Yeah. It's in our interest that the Super Eagles should do well. Yes. We're in the business of sports reporting, I mean, sports production and all of that. So it is in our interest that the Super Eagles should do well. And for Nigeria, where football is it's a unifying factor, yeah. It helps us a lot. It helps everybody a lot. Put your mood off. We're going, going through a lot of stress, uh -huh. uh, power issues, <laughs> the economy, all and all that. Everything. But the Super Eagles, when they play, you forget some of these things and you focus on the game. And when they keep winning, you keep, you know, enjoying the yeah the the, the Nations Cup breath of fresh air was so, an example. Yeah, yeah. That victory against South Africa, the, the whole victory emotional over Cameroon, well, victory over yeah, Angola. It know. was just amazing. Yeah. All right. So, so it was. It's good. Uh, you have a point with that. So, yeah. sir, thank you so much for being a part of our show today. Thank you as always once again for the opportunity, Victor. Uh, hopefully, we'll get out who he feels should be the ideal manager. Of the hopefully, Spirit before we come back on we'll the podcast, have, yes. we'll be talking about who <laughs> the, manager the new is. manager is. I agree. Is. Or we just. Second you to the team immediately. Straight up. As manager. Straight up. So start putting your plans together. You, I'll assist you, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> as a former media officer of the Super Eagles, yeah. I'll assist you. I'll mm -hmm. they'll be like, who is that? Will you both say his assistant? Don't worry. <laughs> 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 All right, now, of course, it's always a pleasure having him. But thank you, too, for being a part of our episode today. Remember, please be a part of this conversation on social media. We have X, Facebook, and Instagram. But most importantly, please, I can't stress this enough, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for being a part of the Super Eagles Watch podcast on this episode. Until next time, be good, be safe, keep it going as a Super Eagles fan. It is bye from us and bye for now.